All right, well, here it is. Project number one, time to put the winch on. So I've taken the tire off, getting ready to take the shock off so I can get in there easier. And I got all the parts laid out, so that's what you're gonna see going today. I'm gonna install the winch. I hope to get this winch switch installed today as well. And with any luck, maybe even my belt temperature gauge. We'll just see how much time Ruth lets me spend out here today. Uh, but I hope to get those things done today and tomorrow's Thanksgiving. I'm going to spend the whole day out here in the garage wiring things up. So there's a whole pile of stuff over there on the shelf and a whole pile of boxes right there that are eventually going to be right there on that machine. So stay tuned. I'll show you more as I make progress. Uh, again, I'm not really a how-to guy. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for me to do a how-to video for you folks and how to do this stuff. But what I do see value in is showing you what I'm installing. Once I get it done, kind of get an overview of what I did. And if there's anything I did different, just highlight it so you know, you know why I did it different. Uh, just to give everybody ideas. I know they enjoy working on this stuff. If you need a how-to video, Polaris has two fantastic how-to videos on how to install this winch on a Turbo S, so I don't really need to do that. All right. All right, everybody, here we are, day two. I'm working on the Razor still. Uh, obviously, a lot of accessories to install. My son and I worked on this for a little while last night, and we were able to successfully get the winch installed. Uh, but just like anything that I do, of course, there had to be some drama, right? So it's in, <clears throat> it's working, but not without frustration. And let me tell you why. Uh, I took the time and energy to get it installed, which is a fair amount of work when you stop to consider what you have to work with down here as far as getting your hands in there. I mean, I was fortunate. The razor was four feet in the air on the lift. The tires were off, so I was able to get back in there and do quite a bit more as far as getting the wiring where it needed to be. We got it all wired up, and I wanted to test it. So my son and I got the wiring done <clears throat> we turned on the ignition and i hit the remote and i got two clicks a hard click out and a hard click in like that's uh that's part for the course why would i expect a polaris winch to work on a polaris razor so we start troubleshooting and first of all uh, we had taken a lot of time to make sure all the wiring was very neat and we needed to undo all that and trace all the wires and make sure they were right. Sure enough, everything's plugged into where it's supposed to be. So we start checking some of the other things. Maybe it's, maybe it's a dead battery. I mean, I've had that problem before. So uh, while we had the machine apart, I went ahead and installed <coughs> my Genius charging port and uh, battery monitor. I went ahead and plugged this battery charger in and right away it showed the battery was at 50 percent so with the battery at 50 percent i think ah okay wasn't anything i did i wasn't stupid it's just that the battery doesn't have enough ass to drive the winch no big deal i, I leave the charger plugged in we let it get to 100 percent before we try it again and i'm in the meantime i'm drilling holes for my uh belt temperature gauge and getting the, the winch uh dash switch wired up we get all that done, <clears throat> the battery's at 100%. Moment of truth, let's give it a shot. Turn the key on, turn the remote on, press the out button, click. Press the in button, click. Come on! So, all right, there's definitely a charged battery. Let's, let's see what's going on. And my son said, well, Dad, we should make sure it's getting 12 volts. All right, that's a good idea. Right on this hot lug, it's supposed to be 12 volts all the time. I'm here to tell you, nine volts now recap brand new battery charge at 100 percent battery cable from the battery to this stud from this stud another cable to here doesn't seem right pull the cap off this 12 volts go back here nine volts what? Yeah. Here's why. This thing. This is the cable that's just, that is used by Polaris. And as you can see, it's got a 200 amp 
either fuse or relay in it. Something has failed inside this thing here that cost me about an hour of my time. Because right now, if I was to plug this into the battery and get the, the tester out, it would still show nine volts. So we went to AutoZone, we got another cable, we reconnected it, turned the key on, try the winch. Wonder of wonders, the winch works. It goes out, everything's fine. All right, let's try in. No, I mean, life can't be simple. It's gotta be a problem, right? So press the in button, click. Come on. <clears throat> so uh, I started texting the fellas and Benjamin was like, well, maybe your, maybe your magnet's not working. And I'm like, well, the magnet, I don't know why the magnet wouldn't work, but I went, I traced the wires for the, um, the magnetic auto stop. And sure enough, when I unplug the auto stop, mind you, the winch rope is 10 feet out of the razor with the magnet 10 feet away, in's not working. We disconnect the magnet and the auto stop, comes right in. So, all right, great, another failure, but whatever, I don't need it, I don't like it anyway. So it's unplugged, and now the winch is 100%. What else did we install? Uh, <clears throat> you may have noticed this fuse block. So my son fabricated this out of steel. It's a bracket that we put over the radiator so that we could mount this Vent Racing's fuse block. This fuse block comes with a 50 amp relay and cables wired up for the accessory rail. And then you can just put fuses in and run the wires for all of your accessories right there. Nice and easy. Uh, they're proud of it. It's $129, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm happier for it because everything that's on this machine has a dedicated fuse, a dedicated circuit. If anything goes wrong, I've got a spot right here, quick and easy, pop the hood, because I'm good to go. Now, Ryan's, <clears throat> Ryan's done the exact same thing, except Ryan put his right here. <laughs> so when Ryan put his right here, it works great and it looks amazing. If you've seen the pictures on Facebook, his wiring, yeah, I mean, mine is uh, functional. Ryan's is a work of art. I don't have that kind of patience, so I didn't do that. Uh, <clears throat> the other reason I didn't put mine here is because you need to take this piece of plastic off and with the cage the way we've got it, it's really a bear to do. So I wanted quick and easy access, so I put it right here. So now I have a dedicated fuse block for all my accessories and they're all being independently wired. The other thing we installed, to thieves out there is a razor tracker. I'm sick of these things getting stolen and I put that on there. I'll always know where it is. If somebody does steal it, believe me, I'm not calling the cops. I'm coming to fix the problem. This is crap. You guys can't keep stealing razors. Uh, it's infuriating to see people's vacations and lives ruined when, they're, when they've got a ton of money wrapped up in a truck, a trailer, and a razor. They park in a hotel parking lot and get up in the morning to go ride and the whole shooting match is gone. It's crap and you deserve to die. That's all there is to it. So I've got a razor tracker in there and <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure that this thing doesn't get stolen and if it does, we're gonna find it and we're gonna find the people that did it. So the uh, next up, we worked on some of the other wiring. So as I mentioned, we installed my Razorback belt temperature gauge. I will not own a side-by-side. -side. I don't care if it's uh, a Polaris I don't care if it's a Can-Am, I don't care if it's a Kawasaki, I won't own one without the belt temperature gauge. It does, it gives you so much insight to how the machine is, is behaving on the trail and I have never blown a belt on the trail. I've always been able to see when the belt's getting too hot and then I get out of it. So it's a worthwhile investment. With all the technology in this thing, you know, when I stop and think about it, with all the technology that's inside this machine, the fact that Polaris didn't take the time to put a sensor on the belt is a little frustrating to say the least, but I'm all right with it, I guess. I, 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 Razorback makes a really good product. And here is my chase light. So my chase light is a cheap $99 X-Bright chase light from Amazon. Uh, the wiring is not done. That's temporary till I figure out where I'm going to route all the wires, but it does work really well for 99 bucks. And when you ride at night like we do, or um, early in the morning when there's a lot of fog, the chase light really is a help when it comes to making sure the person behind you can see you and doesn't drive off the mountain. So for me, it's a $99 investment that's well worth it. Uh, will I use it much? 
only when I'm riding with these guys at night or in very dusty conditions. But it's good to have it on there. And this is, again, this is a, a long-term purchase. We're going to get a lot of miles out of this, just like we're going to get a lot of miles out of the X3. The X3 is configured nearly exactly the same way. Uh, I didn't put a chase sight on yet, but I have one on order, and I am going to add it. Uh, i got to figure out where I'm going to put it because the snorkels kind of get in the way. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. A couple other things that are going to happen. So today, we're going to wire up the... LED light bar on the hood, on, on the top of the cage. We're going to wire up the rock lights, and we're going to wire up my LED cube lights. <laughs> and then we're going to get the cage all the way back on and tightened down. And from there, I will start working on other things on the interior, like the gated shifter from NPR, or NRP. And yeah, yeah that's it, Chris. NPR News is making gated shifters now. I have an NRP gated shifter that I'm going to put on it. Let's show it to you. right there so that's going in next of course you know had to be blue for more horsepower all right that's today i'll uh, i'll let you folks know in the next video kind of where we got what kind of progress we made but i did promise i would provide updates as we're doing things and that's what i'm doing again not how to's just kind of why's and what i did uh thanks for watching